Hello everybody, um, today I'm going to be looking at a study of Southeast Asia. Um, I was looking back at my notes and I noticed that I started this research about five years ago, um, maybe even more. Um, so uh, actually I was really uh, surprised uh, at all the new information. So uh, compared to uh, one of my earlier projects basically four years ago, um, there's just a lot of new information um, and new maps and just everything, believe it or not, has changed in just a few years. So I have a whole bunch of maps uh, listed on this web page here. Um, and then we're basically going to go through uh, a wildlife map here, uh, maybe even look at current uh, weather and wind maps, um, kind of look at the earthquake situation and then look at the overall um, supply and demand. Um, <clears throat> for all of sub Southeast Asia, uh, including imports and exports, um, and then more of the wildlife maps, and then some of the topography, mountain ranges, um, and just uh, details uh, regarding uh, the uh, geography, uh, as well as shipping lines. Um, and then we're going to look also at the, uh, <clears throat> essentially this is the geological map. Uh, you'll see some uh, different areas <clears throat> that uh, basically I didn't discuss in the previous discussion. Um, here's some of the plate tectonics uh, you can see in black, um, as well as the geology. And then we're also going to look at the soil maps uh, for Southeast Asia and kind of look at how that maybe fits uh, with the rest of the world. And then also some pretty detailed population maps uh, that I did study uh, many years ago, um, but basically I wanted to look at some refined details about how things are interconnected between the islands. Um, and then also there's a electrical map uh, that I wanted to look at pretty carefully here. Um, and then also the this is the uh, lightning map for all of Southeast Asia. So there's definitely some details here um, that we didn't discuss. Um, I did look at the earth at night imagery, um, but it's just so important. Uh, it's hard to explain uh, some of the details in Southeast Asia without looking at that nighttime photography. And then we're gonna look at the rivers, aquifers, and population kind of all on one map um, here. So uh, I basically outlined all of those details um, in a bunch of different uh, maps here. I'm going to load those up once again. Hopefully it's not going to take too long, but we have quite a number of maps uh, that we're going to go through and look at together um, and <clears throat> basically diagrammed kind of these all out. It's kind of still loading these up. So we're going to kind of go through quite a bit of information here um, and hopefully it will all be super interesting um, compared to the last study that we did. So um, give me one second here. I'm going to pause this. So I wanted to start really with the population map. Um, and I wanted to, to raise the question, uh, you know, where, what's going on on our planet um, and how do we start to understand um, essentially everything that's going on. So population is a really great place to start um, because the human footprint and the wildlife footprint um, are converging um, and Basically, uh, I noticed a lot of new details. You're going to see these weird red lines um, that I posted on some of these imageries here, uh, kind of connecting some of the details uh, throughout Southeast Asia. So you'll have to really look at this carefully in order to see what's going on. There's obviously the big cities, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh City, Bangkok, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur. Jakarta and Manila that you probably have already heard of. Um, and then there's basically a whole lot of other cities um, that you may never have heard of um, that are actually very important. Um, you can see that most of the island of Java actually is not Jakarta. Actually, most of the people live outside of Jakarta and the population has definitely changed um, even over into Sulawesi and all throughout um, basically the Philippines, there's been huge amounts of population as well as in Sumatra here. So um, basically uh, what I did here is try to diagram how uh, the mainland essentially uh, is connected over to the islands. So uh, there's a couple different philosophies about how people actually got out to Southeast Asia and Oceania, uh, essentially these islands. 
and one of the main philosophies is that they went through the land and kind of crossed over through Sumatra and then went down to Jakarta and basically made modern Jakarta kind of the main, Indonesia being the main central point um, for all of this Southeast Asia in terms of population in the ocean as well as the Philippines. Uh, but what might be surprising to you um, is how some of these new cities are related and how the future is kind of changing uh, both with air traffic as well as with ocean traffic. So on the ocean traffic map, uh, you can kind of see uh, there's a different perspective about how this all works in Southeast Asia. Most of the goods are actually shipped 90% are shipped by water, not by air. So actually these ocean maps become very vital to understand and it's actually not always clear even to the extent how important this little strait is through Singapore and some other areas. You can definitely see the hot red uh, path lines going right around Ho Chi Minh City. And actually that's pretty good accurate um, to say uh, when you look at both of the maps here so let's just jump back into the other map really quickly here sorry this one does the population so we have a few of them that i wanted to look at uh the soil map we have also the geological map um which can tell us a totally different story uh and when we combine everything both the population geology geography basically everything that we possibly know about oceana it actually has a pretty interesting story and in some ways different than we may expect um, because a lot of the geography does define how the future might be in all of Southeast Asia. So uh, here is more of the topology. We'll kind of get into that in a moment here. I'm gonna pause this uh, so some other people can catch up. So your first time studying Southeast Asia, <clears throat> you may be very surprised uh, at some of the maps. Uh, this is kind of a static image showing most of the islands, um, and you can also see some of the mainland, and there may be quite a different population perspective after you start to see how important, especially Indonesia is, and also India um, being actually pretty close, um, as close as China. Let's load up a different map here. So uh, I have a number of different maps here. Uh, this one um, that can hopefully tell us a little better of a story about what's going on. <clears throat> so this is gonna load up, it takes a little bit. It's basically loading up all the population for the whole entire region. Uh, it may help to actually change this map to do black and white. So we'll see this a little bit clearer, more clearly with just the mountains and the population on this. And I think we can even load it a little bit faster if you're having trouble. I have it on high quality right now. Um, let's just do this as medium quality and that will be a little bit faster for this discussion as we pan around. So you can see actually India is very important and very close. There's just so many people coming in through India. Uh, obviously Jakarta down here. Um, and then when you look at China, um, basically Hong Kong actually being very important. Um, and actually down here, basically in C Cambodia, as well as Ho Chi Minh City. Um, there's kind of some different stories um, that you may not quite understand as you get further and further out. So the other big surprise uh, is basically in the Philippines. I didn't realize how populated every island is in the Philippines and actually how quickly Sulawesi is changing and um, they're gonna be moving the capital uh, from Indonesia over to Borneo. So that may entirely change the farming structure. There's just so much more farmland here in Borneo, um, as well as Sumatra has already really filled in heavily on the population side. So that's kind of a scary concept, meaning only the smallest islands. And actually really, when you look at the details, everything has been populated, perhaps with the exception of Papua New Guinea um, and the far, far east here. Um, and you can see Australia actually having not too much population at all on the north side, but quite a number of rivers. And there is actually some pretty heavy rains that come along the coast here. Uh, so it actually changes what you might think about in terms of wildlife in Southeast Asia. Let's jump to that wildlife map just for a review here. So in terms of things, this map actually is really great for the land species doesn't show anything about the ocean. So 
it's actually the exact opposite of this map. This white area actually becomes the most important for the ocean and actually would be very bright red because there's so many different species of fish. Um, but on the land, actually what's been happening is that Thailand has kind of made all this into farmland as well as you can see India. At one point in history, uh, the map looked very different. So how should the map look? So the map probably should look more like this map and you can see uh, basically everywhere that it's pink and red definitely should have been a wildlife zone should have been bright red um, these are extremely bright red areas on all these islands so actually this map um, doesn't show at all what the actual picture should be let me just see if i can show both of those maps at the same time and um, might be a little bit tricky let's see if we can do this here so So yeah, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to show both of these maps on the same thing, but we'll get that there. So you can see that basically the mountain ranges as we move, let me do this always on top, and that should fix the problem there. So you can see uh, that there definitely should be a lot of wildlife on Sumatra um, as there is. Uh, there's actually slightly different red zones here. Uh, there's a bright red, and basically what's happened is it's all been pushed you can see that little notch right there is actually that little bright red spot right there. Um, and there actually should be quite a lot of wildlife on Hunan Island as well. And even on the tip of down here in um, Taiwan. So actually, and also another factor is having many different biomes. So having both uh, the green, the pink, and the red means that you have different altitudes typically and you have different types of soils. And so we're gonna look at the soil map in a moment as well. So there's all different kinds of factors that are factored into the wildlife map, but essentially these zones in red definitely should be all red. So you can see there's been a huge impact and you can basically see that most of that is due to, is to, due to Thailand and Cambodia and also the edge of Vietnam. So basically all of Vietnam should have a lot of wildlife um, but it basically is starting to change, particularly around Ho Chi Minh City and the Delta here. So that's basically where it actually should be, uh, this region right here. This should be a very big hotspot as well as the coastline here. Um, but basically this is kind of changing due to Thailand and Cambodia and a lot of tourism. Now you can see probably the hottest spot is actually unusual. It's down here in Malaysia uh, near Kuala Lumpur. And there's actually some, we're gonna look at the weather patterns here and there actually is quite a lot of wildlife there as well. So uh, so no matter what way you look at this map, uh, it's probably going to be a different map than you might expect. Um, and like I said, this whole region should be very bright red. Um, and of course, all of India should be very bright red as well. So there's big questions about how this all started. Uh, perhaps some of the argument lays in India because essentially India should have been all red and it's basically been pushed up into the mountains. So the reason that we see this here is because people don't live in the mountains and that's where the wildlife is and it's basically been pushed all the way to Assam, India. So if Assam, India was bright red, then definitely all these other areas should have been bright red as well and you can see it's kind of red along the coast and that's because it's less populated. So there's definitely some serious arguments about how this all started basically between Taiwan, Hong Kong, um, excuse me, not Taiwan, Thailand and India and Hong Kong. Basically those are the main key questions as well as the modern day question of what's going on in the Philippines. I wanna switch this topic slightly because some people are interested primarily in the economics. Um, and I kind of drew these maps. I actually learned the most from looking at these maps. So. Uh, let's look at the export map first. So uh, if it's bright blue, that's essentially where Southeast Asia is exporting to. So in yellow is essentially the region that we're talking about. A lot of that actually comes from mainland. So it's actually from Thailand. Uh, and uh, basically Thailand is the center of most of this uh, discussion um, economically, but it's actually all of Southeast Asia. So the mainland, actually, it's, it's going to be a quite... A different story when you start looking at Indonesia, Philippines, and the others. So it's kind of difficult. I wanted to group it all into one so that we could kind of see uh, bigger because some of these countries are so small in terms of their exports 
um, that it's a little bit more interesting to see when you combine everything. So you can see definitely China is taking a big chunk of this as well as the United States. And actually China makes sense because it's so close. Um, but the question is exactly what is China um, importing from Southeast Asia? We can get into that and I can show you some of the charts on that. Um, but it's actually quite interesting how these routes go. So I wanted to diagram how the routes go basically over to Brazil and even to Australia actually is huge and India, right? So a lot of that may actually go around the coast or even into Calcutta. So it's a really interesting question uh, where that boat may actually, where these boats may go through. Typically they do go through the Singapore and the strait in between Sumatra. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of traffic right through there. Um, but actually a lot of this still is going to Japan as you see and Korea uh, and China. So that kind of may surprise you. So on the import side, you actually get quite a lot from China as well as the United States. Some of that may be technology related. So although it's shipped, although it's known as the United States imports, it may actually go to China first. And then from China, it may actually go down to Southeast Asia just because the products are like an iPhone is being made in China. So a lot of these products are actually made in China, but designed in the United States, for example. So it's still a big question about where this is all coming from. And you can actually see there's actually pretty good similarity between the imports and exports, which is a pretty good sign. Uh, but it's still important to look uh, probably more carefully at the import side. And actually India probably should uh, be more involved as well as Africa, right? You can see they're both close, um, but they're not really as involved as you might think. Um, so on the export side, um, you may be surprised how much technology is actually being produced in Southeast Asia, but when you look at the imports, they're also importing. So some of that may be part of the products that they are producing may use components from other parts of the world. Um, and you can see industrial machinery, and then you also see vegetables. And a big surprise for me was wood on this. Um, and then you can see fruits and nuts, which would be pretty obvious uh, as, per, as well as apparel being kind of a newer but very important part of the industry. And then you can see oil and various uh, other things being exported. Um, and then you also see a lot of imports on that side as well. Um, and then a big concern I would have on this whole thing is on plastics. Uh, if you studied what plastic waste is going on around the world, actually the <laughs> Southeast Asia is actually kind of doing the worst on the ocean. I don't know if you've seen any of the videos of people trying to clean up in Bali or different parts of uh, Philippines, but their, their whole rivers are just full of just plastic bottles and things. And actually that's one of their biggest imports. So I think they can look at that carefully. Um, and they're actually exporting quite a lot of plastics as well. So... Uh, something to think about um, as well. Um, these diagrams are actually pretty helpful thinking about the, over the years, you can kind of see uh, basically that around 2000 um, here, things started to, 2002, things really started to change uh, for Southeast Asia. Uh, and there's actually kind of a downward trend in 2008 and then 2009, things really started to pick up. So basically ever since 2009, uh, the economy has just gone really crazy in terms of exports. Uh, and then on the import side, it's actually also gone crazy uh, as well. So there's been um, kind of almost a steeper incline. You can see in some of these areas, uh, about the same actually. But uh, but there's different, different time periods on each of these, um, which could be studied pretty carefully um, and looked at. Now, if you're not familiar with different regions of the world, um, this green region essentially defines Southeast Asia, but I wanted to include quite a bit more in with this discussion because definitely uh, the Oceania area, um, I would say all these islands because of the earthquake maps that we're gonna look at are kind of interconnected as well as you can see uh, the climate actually goes pretty far out that direction. And there's quite a lot of pink climate here in Australia. So we'd have to kind of look at that carefully um, to kind of see what those regions are but there's basically different regions all around the world um on this map uh, i kind of wanted to highlight again from the the population map you kind of got to use uh this to understand essentially where the population 
is and where the farmland is. And when you combine both of those factors, this geographic map kind of shows you where they're not going to be and also where people are are going to be. So in the future, you can see how important basically this is. Thailand is basically producing all of the uh, most of the significant amounts of food, uh, as well as Cambodia here. And these regions in here are actually producing quite a lot of food um, when you look at the food maps. And a lot of that is changing now to um, Sumatra as well as Borneo. So basically that's kind of threatening all the wildlife in the region. So when we look at the population map, we definitely see that that is a big factor in the Philippines as well as in Java down here in Indonesia. So can you imagine this whole place being filled with people? I don't know how that's going to happen and if that's that definitely does not make sense for the wildlife so we definitely start need to start thinking about major areas um, so that doesn't happen um, in terms of completely populating everything this aquifer map is really one that should be looked at very carefully let me just jump to that and show you how this works um, because there's such a oh, what's going on here there we go Oh, this one's probably the problem. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so on the aquifer map, just a little, oh, this is always on top, that's why. Always on top. Uh -huh. So uh, on these maps, you basically have to load up a different one and kind of maybe even remove the, the population. So you basically have a river map here, um, and you can kind of see uh, that the aquifers are going to be in these major regions with uh, big rivers. So we'll load up a couple of these aquifer maps. So there's basically major hydrological basins of the world, and that will show you some of the bigger ones uh, to start with. So you can see here, and um, that kind of shows you how the mountain range works, particularly in Borneo. So there's basically this half of the island and then the other half and the rivers basically go different directions on each of those sides. And then if you load up the detailed aquifer map, uh, hydrological basins of the world, you'll see even further details. So it's very important to go in and essentially study exactly where these aquifers are and how they're all interconnected. Um, they're very interesting and different um, to look at. And you can see Borneo basically being huge as well as Sumatra. So the big part of that discussion would be there. Uh, and then you can even load up the human population density on top of that and see everything all in one map. Um, and then the really surprise becomes when you add the, this is the farmland. So here you can start to see basically the farmland encroaching, basically being very, very important to look at. Um, and this basically traces all the way back to um, really Myanmar uh, and then even northern Thailand. Um, so you can see uh, as they push farmland here, it becomes also in Cambodia. Um, and then it becomes basically tip of Malaysia. Uh, and then once you get to Malaysia, uh, it basically splits off into Borneo and Sumatra being kind of the major you know, farmland areas. And then even on these islands, and you can start to see some scary new plots happening out here in uh, far far east Oceania area. And once this island gets filled, we're really in a lot of trouble. I mean, we're already in a lot of trouble for the wildlife. So this is a really important map to look at. Um, and I think I diagrammed this out pretty carefully. Let's jump back to that diagram here and see what I diagrammed on that one here. So. So here's the population one, um, and I think this is the world's worst farm map. So this is essentially the map that we were just looking at, and you can see there's some new ideas that kind of pop in, right? So India basically is, is running out of farmland. That actually may be pressuring certainly Sri Lanka, um, and then actually it actually pressures a Sumatra and a lot of this area over here. So really India has to take a lot of responsibility um, because there's just huge amounts of pressure from India in terms of the food situation. So uh, as you saw on the import export map, India was definitely 
a big factor on that. But you can carefully start to understand based on the population, based on the farmland map, uh, and basically start to make the interconnections. And it basically starts to really come down to Singapore and how this split into the few. I mean, the, the real problem was many hundreds or even thousands of years ago, going all the way back to when India deforested the entire country of India. So there's no more trees, basically, in all of India. All the trees have moved up into the Himalayas and up into the mountain ranges, right? So basically, uh, you know, forgiven the few past few thousand years of deforestation, tracing it to modern times, Borneo becomes the central part of the discussion, and it's almost over for the Philippines. You can see it's almost all going to go blue here. Um, and then where are they going to get their food? Well, they're going to get it from Borneo and then even Sumatra. So it's very common for food. You might say, oh, well, you got to get your food locally, and that's absolutely true. But what's going on uh, with these shipping maps and global shipping, even in the United States, if you go to the the, the uh, supermarket, uh, s almost all the vegetables are from Mexico. That's at least 3,000 miles, 4,000, 5,000 miles away, uh, depending on where you are um, in the United States or Canada. And the situation in Canada is even worse um, because it gets very cold in Canada. So basically the uh, bananas that you eat, the fruit, all that stuff is going to be coming from more of the equator. Um, and you basically don't see the diversity of food products as you do see in Southeast Asia. And there is just a huge amount of fruit coming from Central America and even as even the Amazon jungle. I mean, it's essentially the Amazon jungle when you eat bananas from Ecuador. So uh, basically, as you look at this, you'll start to see very important details. Um, perhaps some of the most important details become around Sumatra excuse me, not, not only Sumatra, but Sulawesi, and seeing how this South Island basically is connected over here to the Philippines. And you can basically see how this whole chain, if we can, you know, essentially this is gonna change all to bright red and farmland. Um, and when you take the uh, other map, where is it here, this one, you know, you should really say there shouldn't be farmland on Sulawesi because it's so mountainous, um, but they're actually just populating the whole entire island as well as this. So you can see that this is probably going to be a lot of farmland, um, just like it was in Thailand at some point, and actually even Sumatra. So my hope is that that basically the Philippines would really start to uh, question all the biodiversity questions as well as Sulawesi. Um, and if they are going to move the capital from Jakarta, they should basically reclaim all this land to national parks. That takes lifetimes. So it's not an easy project to uh, reclaim all these islands for wildlife. But uh, hopefully what will happen is that places like Bali will become less popular. People will try to travel more towards where the capital region is and not necessarily towards these little islands that are basically for wildlife. And these can be reclaimed essentially for wildlife. And on the tip of this, actually India owns this island right here. So these islands are vital and it does actually start all the way back up in Myanmar because the population question, um, as you look at the population over here, you'll see basically that this whole region is actually got a lot of forest in there. So there's actually quite a lot of mountains and forest and everything. So when you combine everything, you start to see how it's all interrelated. Uh, but definitely this map is very helpful uh, for understanding precisely what's going on in terms of the future of farming in all of Southeast Asia. So. Again, I highlighted some of these maps, and you can see there's definitely going to be water in these regions. There's definitely going to be flat land, and it's going to be uh, unbelievable farmland, but they're going to deforest everything here. So they really need to really think about how to help uh, in the Philippines. So uh, some of that is going to be a decreased population. There's going to have to be some, some decreases in the population um, and focus more on the major cities. And when you combine all this with the major earthquakes, and natural disasters. This is the world's uh, most active region for earthquakes. It just doesn't make sense uh, to be building heavily 
we got in the South Islands of the Philippines, right, as well as all these smaller islands in here, you're just going to have absolute devastation uh, with these, uh, you know, you get 9.0s even in Japan, as you can see Japan actually having huge amounts of activity as well. And this is only a small, this is only the last 30 days and you have hundreds of earthquakes within the last 30 days. For example, that's probably like a 6.0 right there. Uh, just off the coast of Taiwan. Um, so Taiwan is even definitely part of this equation. So, uh, but going back to the uh, biodiversity question. Um, so when you look at this, uh, you have to start to say uh, Hunan Island, um, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, um, just all these places on the mainland need to start thinking heavily about how the population is going to work in all of Southeast Asia here, um, and even Australia, because it's so close. Uh, you have Brisbane down here, um, and then the Coral Reef actually being right along here. But, you know, we call it the Coral Reef here, the Great Barrier Reef, but really all of this is so much more important than just the Great Barrier Reef that we don't even talk about it really. So, uh, and then also India has that bright red coast here. Um, which is pretty heavily important for a lot of the tea farmers and other uh, aspects of farming and also biodiversity. So I'm going to pause this for a second um, so that you can take a look and review all the maps um, that we just discussed. Um, clearly, the uh, Philippines also has a major electricity. There's a lot of electricity running through all the islands here, and you can also see um, that this is getting ready to go in Borneo and Sumatra is already very heavily uh, electrified and a lot of that probably started from Malaysia incidentally and then goes back to Thailand and then even here uh, in Ho Chi Minh City so definitely I'll just go through these really quick so you can see all of them um, but we'll come back in a moment here after you have had a chance to uh, review some of these details and we'll try to take a look at last final details of this discussion. So I'm just looking at some comments here uh, from some people watching uh, and it looks like people are saying um, that the uh, food production is very important to think about um, as well as the biodiversity. Olivia was mentioning here and uh, basically looking at the soil. Oh yeah, I needed to look at the soil map. I'll show you that soil map in a moment. So thanks for reminding me about that. Um, and let's just look at that soil map since you mentioned that. Um, I actually did diagram that out. And I'm sorry, I didn't quite discuss this enough. So so yeah, so you're absolutely right. Um, we definitely need to look at this. Uh, so biodiversity really perhaps even starts with the soil diversity, right? And as you have uh, different types of soil around the world, you have different types of plants and you have, essentially you have a different plant, right? So, and if there's a different plant and there's a different speed, everything depends on green stuff. So uh, most of the food, most animals on our planet are vegetarians. I'm a vegetarian including, and basically all starts with the um, uh, plant life and that depends on the um soil right so let me just look at this because you might find this super interesting i found this really interesting um so this is the main soil map there's actually two soil maps i probably should load up the other one i'll load up the other one just because we have talked about this uh, but as you look at the entire planet let's i'm really sorry about this it's going to take a little while to load it um, because it's such a complicated map um, but i really love it a lot so if you look at soil here and then you do the 2.0 i'll add that whole map to the planet probably take a little bit of a time to load that uh but let me see harmonize so so it's still loading that so while we're waiting for it to load here i'll go back to the details so this one actually really helps uh i really like this one a lot because it doesn't require loading up all that complexity um, but you can actually look at the whole earth this way. Uh, but let's look at Southeast Asia and compare that to the United States. So I was really surprised. Um, originally, I was like, oh, wow, it's all about uh, jungle dirt. And you can see there's this bright orange dirt uh, that really shows up only in Africa. 
and then there's a slightly different orange that kind of shows up off of this here and then there's kind of this pink soil um, and then let's go over to the Amazon and you can see this blue stuff is actually very vital um, it actually is uh, the uh, sediment uh, from all the runoff of, of many different types of soil so you basically go all the way back deep into the Amazon and you see there's definitely different types of soil here and <clears throat> Basically, in the United States, we only have a small patch of that soil basically down as you get towards Florida. Um, so that was really helpful for me to understand, um, just comparing it to the United States. So you can look at wherever you are located, whether you're in Europe, South America, Central America, India, or China. You can basically compare your soil to any other region around the world. Uh, but basically, these floodplains are extremely vital. So it basically, um, on this whole discussion... Um, it basically starts with India, China, Ho Chi Minh City, and Bangkok here, right? So we really have to look carefully at that. Um, and I tried to diagram that out with both the population as well as thinking about how that affects. So essentially what happens here is that, you know, in a place like Hong Kong, sewage, road runoff, especially like if you if you smell the river, even in my small town, it smells terrible. And that all dumps into the ocean. And believe it or not, some of the fish actually like that stuff or eat it. So it ends up being eaten by the fish um, because they don't know what it is and they're just eating, you know, particles in the water. And so the cleanup is actually done by the animals. And so that basically means that Bangkok and particularly Ho Chi Minh City, because of all this runoff here, basically becomes really vital uh, in that discussion. So, and as you looked at the other water maps, uh, let's see, where are they here? So you can see this is population and water. You can start to see, aha, this guy down here is gonna be a very important settlement uh, because it's going to dump off into these different regions. And actually you would, would even need to look at the lightning maps because you start to see uh, basically the weather map combined with the uh, basically biological maps, you'll start to see certain pockets like this pocket right in here. I was very surprised at, in Silawasi how important that water runoff would be um, there. So, and especially all around Borneo and Sumatra. So you kind of got to look at quite a number of things uh, and then you start to get that combination uh, of what's going on. So again, going back to this map, when you add the farming picture and the population, you kind of draw these red lines to combine to see how um, different cities are interacting with the rest of parts of Southeast Asia. And you'll see where these countries kind of uh, intermingle, uh, the major cities in between them can help us understand. So what can be really fun here is you can actually contact, I've contacted people in Manila, Bangkok, uh, Singapore, uh, all around Indonesia, made some friends, Hong Kong and Guangzhou and in China, basically all over the world you can make friends and you can start to uh, help talk with them and find out about what's really going on in each of these cities. Obviously, Sulawesi becomes a very central part of that. I've tried to make some friends down here in this city. Um, as well as in through Bali and some other areas. Uh, but there's just so many areas, uh, particularly in Borneo and Sumatra, that definitely need to be uh, discussed about the farming situation. So, uh, and then the earth at night also, we didn't really look at that too much. Um, I'm just looking at some of the questions here that people asked. Uh, but, uh, but basically, this Earth at Night thing, I would really dive in deep on that as well. Um, this is the population map. You can kind of zoom in and see a very detailed uh, idea. So let's just zoom in and look at Jakarta so you can see. So as this zooms in, you can see it's very beautifully detailed. Um, and you can actually diagram this out and see precisely uh, which cities are perhaps more uh part of the solution and part of the problem. So um, it's unlikely that Jakarta is gonna change in terms of this population side anytime soon. Uh, there's more people in this island right here than there are in all of Russia. So this is basically a hugely populated island. Um, and the scary part is they're gonna move all these people over to here, to Borneo. So 
uh, and there's definitely lots of cities to look at in here um, and you can zoom in in great detail um, and look at that map let's see if we got that soil map yet aha we got the soil map still is loading a little bit difficult so uh, but this is a really lovely map because it starts to give you even more detail. Um, this soil map is great too, um, but for some reason they're missing some details there on that soil. So you can basically see this is a lot of floodplain and different parts of the floodplain have different types of soil. So definitely worthwhile um, looking at this very carefully um, for the biodiversity. Actually, all these regions uh, should be, regardless of whether they're farmed or not, you still need to care about where those rivers are going, which is basically into the ocean and into the fish. And it all goes back into a big circle. So basically uh, the circle of life and that will eventually affect the quality of our food. So uh, it's very important to look at, particularly at the south side of Borneo. I think they're moving the capital over here somewhere. Um, and of course, this is so volcanic in this area. You can see this red dirt over here. Um, they should probably make a lot of this national parks and convert that all uh, to uh, places that people should not be living in. Um, and as you look at the uh, latest earthquake map, you'll see uh, there is quite a number of earthquakes here, so they are gonna be quite safer on this island. Uh, but it's still, there was just an earthquake here, it looks like within the last hour or so. So it was a 5.0, that could be very devastating. Um, that's just within, I mean, that was, what was the time on this? So yeah, so that's uh, just, uh, it looks like, yeah, so just recently here. So, um, but anyway, so super important to look at that carefully um, when you're trying to understand everything. So going back to the earth at night, let's just zoom in so you can see how beautiful uh, some of these maps are. We just looked at that. So let's look at Singapore. And if you use both your shift key and control key, you can actually kind of pan around and look at how this all is related. So really Kuala Lumpur is huge and you can see some of these other big cities. So some of the population uh, is very important, but you have to have electricity to really start causing damage and problems. So um, basically electrical maps show you some new things and you can kind of see how this all crosses uh, Sumatra from one side of the island to the other. So these kind of cities in here uh, being very vital uh, to understanding how the whole entire island of Sumatra is gonna be populated. Let's look at some other keys. So you can see there's this key city in here. Um, and actually most of the population is down in here in Makassar, um, but actually the light is up there. So that's an interesting question. Um, and then you look at this and you can really see how Taiwan actually was hugely important to the uh, basically technology industry as well as changing everything for all of Southeast Asia. Um, so as well as Hong Kong and then um, Hunan Island. So Ho Chi Minh City here you can see Anyway, so it can be really helpful uh, to look at this map. I'll give you some time. I got gave you the link to that. Um, and basically going through and looking at all those details, it was almost too much to do uh, on this map. So I kind of highlighted some of the key areas. So you can basically see Taiwan, Taipei, um, and even off to Shanghai, right? And kind of in the far distance here, um, India. So. Um, but basically, it all boils down to uh, Bangkok, uh, Ho Chi Minh, and Singapore, as well as Kuala Lumpur, and then especially looking at what's going on in Java. So uh, that can really start to help us understand um, everything um, because it's not really a population map, but it is a light map, and it really helped me a lot um, to basically understand. I'm going to pause this again um, so you can take a look at uh, the light maps and the, all the different maps, and then we'll come right back here in a second. If anybody's got some more questions, I am reading the questions. I'll try to answer anything that I see. So I think what I'll do is look at that soil map because it's so valuable. Um, and we'll actually discuss that live. I'll show you kind of what I've been doing. So basically on the soil map, what you want to do is kind of take that opacity down. Um, and you can see there's the aquifer maps. So I'm not going to use... I'm not gonna use all the hydrological basins, but I'll use the main ones. And you can see that line kind of showing there on that hydrological basin. And it may be just too bright on the soil map, but it's just, 
so helpful to see now you can see some of the farming on this as well as the soil map and you got the global agreement on farming and i think that's just about as best as we're gonna do it's really hard to get everything on here so you kind of got to depend on the farming maps actually help <laughs> quite a lot um if you hold your control key on the 3d map you can't press shift but you just have to press control only you can kind of center it in a way that's helpful and again i'm using the 3d terrain you can also do 3d smooth and there's different versions that you can use here and then if you want to share the map you can share it um, with this so there's a link like that that you can grab so what you can do is just grab a screenshot and i just grabbed the screenshot on on a linux computer it's actually taking a little bit of time because we're doing a video recording right now live on how to do this so just if people wanted to try to diagram some of this themselves um so this is the google earth version and usually the screenshot shows up as last so i can just grab it here and then zoom in a little bit to see so <clears throat> Basically, um, we'll highlight it in red so we can see some of these critical regions. So basically, this is a major, major river, right? Um, but in terms of all this new soil stuff that we're seeing, it's actually coming all off of here, right? Um, there's actually quite a number of islands. So it's really hard to, to draw this in terms of what's more or least important. But there's, if you remember, there's such a huge population in Bangkok, as well as Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, and then you also see this floodplain here. And then there's no doubt that Hong Kong, um, basically this is the, one of the largest cities in the world when you combine Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and Hong Kong, and Macau, all right there. Um, so, uh, but basically from the soil perspective, as we discussed, this stuff in here, basically affects all these islands. So it's hugely important on the south side of Borneo. <clears throat> now, from what I've been studying on these, uh, there's actually, I just finished a river study. Uh, sorry about this, where is my map? So uh, let's just look at that river map really quick because now that it's loaded, it's gonna be a little bit faster so I can take off the soil map. And we're gonna take off everything but the I'm going to even take off the crop maps. Sorry about that. And let's even take off the population because it's hard to see. So this will show us just the rivers. So if I hold my control key down, you can start to see that this river here is actually very vital. It's one of the biggest rivers in the region. But when you combine it, you're basically talking about probably Sumatra and this whole aquifer that's kind of on the south side of Borneo. Um, but these rivers actually go quite far. If you trace this one all the way back, um, it actually becomes almost more part of Cambodia, which shocked me. But this river, because it goes so far up into the Himalayas, actually gets quite a lot of water. So it's actually a combination of all these rivers coming in here, just huge amount of water fresh water so the fish actually love fresh water um they don't sometimes that water can become too salty um so it's important fact to think about um uh, when you do study all these uh drainage plants originally i always was very concerned about bangkok because i saw the population numbers and the tourist numbers but actually ho chi minh city becomes very vital so let's just look again at the soil map um so this has a uh, you can kind of see where these farmlands are. So I'm going to highlight some of that in green and we'll do kind of a brighter green here. So we can see there's definitely this whole new farmland area right in there, uh, as well as all this stuff right in back in here being very vital. And then you see this stuff here and essentially there's a whole another category coming up in there. Um, and not to mention all this stuff basically happening on the south side of the Philippines, right? Um, so, uh, and then we didn't really even discuss this because I'm kind of trying to hide this, um, not really discuss it because it's really scary, but there is such a diverse range of soil in here. Um, as you can see all on the south side here, that's uh, perhaps got some of the most diversity 
in terms of just vast, uh, there's lots of this bright blue stuff, so as well as complexity in the islands. So we can really bring this all the way out to here. And we're basically talking about a vast area, and this goes way out into the ocean. Here, it's hard to even see. There's kind of a swirling side here, and you can basically bring this all the way out here. So this actually, because it's all fresh, land untouched um that it basically becomes a hugely important discussion uh, it really should have started around Silawasi, um, and i'm gonna highlight Silawasi in a couple circles i'm just gonna circle it and circle it again and circle it again I probably should even do one more circle a few more circles so basically Silawasi being really centralized in all this discussion uh, for Southeast Asia in terms of the wildlife and some other things. So uh, so that's pretty much one way to diagram this and then I just save it. Um, and we really didn't even discuss too much about Manila. I probably should have really shown that as well as Taiwan, right? There's some, the, pro, the reason that that is hard to understand is essentially because of this, right? So you have these biodiverse regions here basically going out to Sri Lanka um, and Hunan. So it's actually not just, you have to have not only the soil differences, but also the climate differences make a difference. So basically all of this really needs to be thought of as all, like all this inland stuff needs to be really watched very carefully. And actually China has a huge part to play in Hunan Island. I don't know why they're talking so much about Taiwan, uh, which is actually very vital, but actually Hunan Island, because it actually almost crosses over to mainland China, they should definitely be considering what's going on there as well, because there's so much population in China as well as in India, and India really needs to think about the West Coast here. So that's all something to think about uh, in the future of the discussion. So uh, anyway, so I hope you really enjoy this topic. Um, I mean, obviously... What we just accomplished here is looking at perhaps the most complicated area on our planet. So it's just a huge um, complexity of things going on. Um, and the original discussion that I had um, about five years ago, actually, I can't believe it's been that long, but basically um, there's just so much information here uh, to really look at. And I hope you really have a fun time. Um, I've really made so many friends all around the world talking with people and it's been really interesting to see uh to be a part of the details um, because now you can actually get involved in the discussion uh if you have friends in singapore or anywhere along the mainland coast of china um, hong kong anywhere around here uh, it can be really helpful so uh, there's probably maybe a thousand people listening to this whole conversation um and basically uh you know i'm really grateful and hopefully um you have some questions about what's going on um you know the biodiversity map is an excellent way to start i have a link to that uh in this presentation um but like i said the fish stuff is very important the i don't know whoever worked on this map but it's basically the most important it's the only map really for the biodiversity for the entire planet. Um, so there definitely needs to be some uh, looking into that. Uh, and I would especially look at these uh, mountain maps. This could be really beautiful areas to visit. Again, though, there is a lot of earthquakes and it can be extremely dangerous. And we didn't really look at this enough, but this is really vital um, to look at, particularly in these white regions here. Um, this is kind of the cross-section between where you get to the new areas of southeast asia and kind of the old areas all this should have been moved along the coastline so really what we're talking about is that this this whole region this whole region all the way from taiwan i mean the question really started in taiwan all of this all this coastline this should have been the main question how to actually do it properly here because when we're on the mainland that's where we're going to have the farmland that's where we should really be seriously considering but actually it's been pushed across to sumatra and so the whole question now is actually in borneo sumatra and the ocean areas which we really haven't even have wildlife maps so we have to carefully look at that 
it does help to look at the 3D map and you can kind of see on the ocean floor that this whole area would definitely be because you have different depths of the ocean. That's going to mean there's different types of soil, there's different types of fish, there's different temperatures at different depths. So it's all very important, uh, particularly around Silawasi area to look at. So that's a huge part of the discussion, hopefully. Uh, and this really helped me understand how the geology interconnects. And you can see um, basically the main question we had today was uh, from about the soil map. I think uh, Olivia asked. And then basically you can see there's just a different pathway that you might not expect and different types of rock essentially that can also create the chemistry. So the rock sometimes has different chemistry that affects the soil. So basically that can be a huge factor. So, and all that kind of goes up through the Himalayas. You can see the bright colors coming in through here. And that basically is because most of this is fresh new rock. It's going to be darker because it's basically volcanic um, for most of the earthquakes in those regions. Uh, and there's several different types of these geological maps. This is the USGS map. Um, this is like a private company working on this. And you can see basically this volcanic stuff is very pink in these regions here. And you can see basically Silawasi kind of really starting to get complex on that map in particular. And then again, the soil map that we looked at, uh, there's a couple different versions of that. So that's very important. And definitely diagramming this, this was kind of really helped me understand everything more clearly. Once I was able to essentially diagram where the population and farmland are going, I kind of diagrammed some new areas here on this map that really helped me understand what was going on, as well as here's the lightning map, nighttime map, and some others. So hopefully this has really helped you out. Thank you so much. I'll be publishing this and you can take a look at it. I'd be glad to talk with you about all kinds of details on any of these maps. Um, let me know where you are and how we can potentially work together. I'm working on a couple of films and other kind of media projects in Southeast Asia. Um, I guess one of them is called Offline. Another one uh, actually is in Korea. Um, and just trying to help out in general with uh, getting some better understanding for what's going on. Thank you so much for everything and uh, hope you really enjoy the presentation. See you later.